Welcome back to another Mech Deck Tech. Today we have our fourth and final upgrade guide for you featuring Deadly Disguise for Murders at Karlov Manor. This deck is helmed by Cost Eyes of the Glade, a Manifest Disguise Cloak Commander, right? We're looking to play Yu Gi Oh, flip some cards face up, and uh, gain some surprise effects. Uh, you know, draw a bunch of cards. It'll be a good time. As always, we're adding in 10 cards, taking 10 cards out, and having some honorable mentions at the end. Things that might be a little too expensive to be like, oh, you should definitely go pick this up. As well as some things that just didn't quite make that top 10. That being said, let's dive on into those cards that didn't quite make the cut. Topping out of that list, we have Decimate. You might be thinking, Decimate? That's good value, we're destroying 4 things for 4 mana. And while it is good value, if any of those things happen to disappear between you targeting them and the resolution of the spell, the spell will fizzle because you have to hit every legal choice. Imperial Hellkite follows up that decimation, and, you know, it's a 6-6 six, six for 7 mana, already not great, or it's a 6-6 six, six for 11 mana and lets you search up a dragon to your hand, this deck only had one dragon in it. We actually took it out as well, meaning it really doesn't serve any kind of purpose. Crows and Cloud Scraper uh, is a big old 13-13 that you could theoretically flip with your commander and maybe get in some like cheeky damage once. After that, though, he has a cumulative upkeep sort of trigger going on. If you don't pay it, you sack him. And our opponents aren't dummies. They know that these creatures aren't you know, two twos waiting to be flipped, and I don't think they're going to let them through, because why would they? If this card had Trample or some form of Evasion, I could see it maybe being okay, but as it is by default, I don't think it's great, and it can go. Crows and Colossus finds itself in a very similar state. It's a 9-9 nine nine for 9, or it's a 9-9 nine nine for, again, 11? question mark um just really not great uh i get that the morph cards are kind of limited there's actually not a ton of morph mega morph cloak disguise what have you uh in all of magic but these guys aren't it they're big beat sticks that you're like hoping to surprise your opponent with and i don't think you're going to ransom note is on the chopping block once again i just don't feel like it's doing enough Sure, we could use it to cloak a card, but I I just don't care. It's not great. It's not really advancing our game state. Oh, we have like an extra creature on the field. You know that we paid three mana for. Eh, eh. I don't I don't care. It's not great. It's out of here. Root Elemental is here, looking to be flipped up, costing us a total of ten for a six five. Granted, that flip does let us cheat a creature from our hand onto the field. Our hand is probably going to be pretty full. We have a fair bit of card draw built into the deck. But most of our creatures want to be face down, at least initially. So I don't know that there are a ton of really good targets to be like, oh yes, this is the moment where I flip. Scourge of the Throne is out here looking to dethrone, giving us some extra combats, which is cool. They only untap attacking creatures. If they were to untap all of our creatures, allowing our commander to kind of like continue flipping things for free, it'd be a lot stronger of a combo. Uh, and obviously extra combats is good, but this deck isn't really as heavily focused on just swinging big stompy boys as some other decks are. Teamer War Shaman is up next and also isn't making the cut. Uh, so this actually doesn't manifest at all. It's looking to manifest cards when it ETBs, which is fine. It's 6 for a 4 or 5, not great. Uh, whenever we do flip out any of our cards, they do trigger a fight. And if we wanted to focus more on the, the big stompy kind of morph aspect, I think we could get away with this. Right, but that's not the direction I'm taking it. I'm looking for more tricky kind of things. Uh, but don't worry, you'll see all those changes in just a minute. We have two cards left to uh, cut out of this deck. Thelonite Hermit is up next. 
They flip over, create some sapperlings, and they also act as a sapperling lord. Kind of weird, honestly. And uh, it goes with a go wide strategy. I think that, like, that is a possibility and it gives us some, like, chump lockers, but it's not great. And again, if we're trying to specifically get that flip, which if we're not flipping, this thing is garbage, right? I'm not paying four mana for a 1 1. That happens to boost sapperlings when I don't have any other sapperling outlets in this deck. So what are we doing? We're paying 8 for a 1 1 and 4 2 twos. And like, it's just not, it's not it. It's not for me. Eudora Grave Gardener is last and they are a 5 cost 5 5. And I almost like them, right? And maybe I just don't understand the nature of the effect and I'm wrong here. But whenever another non-token creature we control dies, it gets returned to the battlefield face down. It's a forest. It has no other types or abilities. So to me, that says that if we have another non-token creature die, it comes back as a forest and we cannot flip it. Now, I imagine, hear me out, that if we were to do some flicker effects, that's a way around this. And we do mention some flicker effects in our honorable mentions as a way to kind of cheat out the flipping of our cards. Uh, so maybe if we were going to lean really heavily into the the white flicker effects that we have access to, this dude gets to stay. But because we're not leaning into it heavily in like the main deck, I'm going to go ahead and say he's gone. Now of course, with those cards removed, we need to have 10 cards in to replace them. Tokusai's Welcome is leading the pack on these new cards. Whenever one or more creatures with mana value 3 or less ETB under our control, we get to draw a card. This is going to trigger once a turn. And let me tell you, all of our creatures that are coming in face down uh, have a mana value of 3 or less. And they're going to let us draw a card. This is going to affect our commander, a couple other creatures that we might want to have enter face up. Uh, but good card draw is good card draw, and that's what Tokasai's Welcome is. Dream Chisel follows that up and is going to be a nice, like, mana reducer for all of our face-down spells, which is quite a lot of them. Expose the Culprit. Uh, so we could choose one or both. It really just depends on what our board state is in terms of which one we would choose. Uh, so we get to flip over one of our cards for just two mana, right? Some of them have a much higher cost, and so two mana is pretty good. But also, any of them that have Disguise, we could be like, cool, shuffle, 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 you're back face down, we're going to flip you again in the future, and do some shenanigans. Hide in Plain Sight follows up our Culprit, and it's really just a good way to kind of like, root through the deck a little bit, cheat out some boys for four mana, two each, effectively. And, uh, you know, it kind of just like pushes our game plan a little faster. Yaris, Roar of the Old Gods is our first creature addition. It's doing a couple things, right? It's enabling haste, we love. Whenever one or more face-down creatures we control deal damage to a player, we're drawing a card. So should our face-down boys manage to connect, right? We didn't flip them. We're getting more card draw. We love card draw. And I think this is the most important part, mind you. Whenever a face-down creature we control dies, we return it to the battlefield face-down under its owner's control, and if it's a permanent, we turn it face-up. This is part of a really good combo that I'll get to when I hit the other piece, uh, which we also added to the deck. Uh, so we're actually we're going to jump over to it right now. That other piece is Pyrotechnic Performer, a disguisable 3-2 and when it or another creature is turned face up, that creature deals damage equal to its power to each opponent. Now, what we do here, and you might already, you might be on the same trail I am, right? We have Pyrotechnic Performer face down. They just chilling. They just vibing. We have Yaris on the field. We have a bunch of other face down creatures, be it from, you know... Disguise, Manifest, Morph, what have you, doesn't matter. They are all face down. We've been, we've been setting this up, right? We cast a board wipe 
to destroy all creatures. Better yet, we destroy all creatures with mana value 3 or less using the austere command that is in our deck. This wipes out all of our face down boys. Because they don't actually have any mana value, right? Their mana value is effectively zero. Wipes them all out. They all come back. They all flip. Pyrotechnic Performer is like, oh boys, did we all just simultaneously flip right here? Mm. Let's burn this whole table to the ground. Chef's Kiss. Mentor of the Meek follows up our Pyrotechnic Performer and is really just here for more card draw. Right, so all of our face-down creatures have power of two, so we could pay the one. If we do, we get to draw a card. It's not limited to once a turn. We're trying to keep our hand full, the game moving. Green Belt Radical is another finisher. And this actually works really well, again, with the Pyrotechnic Performer. Uh, so if we do the board wipe, you know, all of our face-down creatures come back, they all flip up. As long as we have a haste enabler still in the field, you know, all of our creatures are going to get a plus one plus one counter. And they're all going to gain trample. And because they we have a haste enabler in the field, ideally our eyes, but we also could have something like Rhythm of the Wilds or something. We swing out, having already burned the whole table for a bunch, and we just finish them off. Delaney Streetwise Lookout is back once again. They make sense for this deck, right? All of our creatures with two power or less can't be blocked by powers uh, by creatures with power three or greater. So this does let a lot of our little dinky dudes get through. And again, if we wanted to focus on more specifically big stompies, we could have. Um, and Delaney kind of facilitates that. But they're really here to allow us to double up on our power two or less triggers. So we're getting a lot of extra card draw. We're getting... You know, mainly that. Mainly card draw, if we're being honest. But there's a few other effects that it also doubles up for us. Last up, but certainly not least, our golden nightmare of the deck. It's Ugin, the Ineffable. This, uh, this Planeswalker is reducing the cost of all of our morphs, our disguises, what have you, by two. Because they are technically colorless spells when you cast them face down. They also let us exile the top card of our deck as a 2-2 colorless spirit. And when that token gets, you know, chump blocked or whatever, or we use it to chump block, ah oh man, is it basically card draw? Yes, it is. They also have some built-in removal, and it's specific to things that are one or more colors, so they can't really deflect it to any of our creatures that are already face down. Uh, they don't have a lot of redirect spells in Magic anyway. Definitely a few, don't get me wrong. But specifically ones that are going to redirect a, uh, a Planeswalker ability. Kind of few and far between. Alright guys, those are the additions, but of course we have some honorable mentions. Starting off with Dockside Extortionist. The Extortionist is just a really good red card. Uh, it's going to get us a bunch of mana. But actually pairs up really well with another addition to the deck. Or an honorable mention, I should say. And that's Teamer Sabretooth. So Teamer Sabretooth is really here in honorable mentions. It just didn't quite make the top 10. I was kind of trying to stick to the core of what the deck is. Uh, but Teamer Sabretooth would let us bounce creatures back to our hand, allowing us to recast them face down, reflip them in the future, and kind of abuse our flip effects. So I think Teamer Sabretooth is actually a really strong addition to this deck, and it just didn't quite make the cut because it wasn't specifically a disguise, uh, morph, so on and so forth effect. We mentioned flickering cards earlier. There's a lot of actually white flicker effects. I included a few in the honorable mentions, but there's actually, there's a plethora of them. They're all good. So I went with Felidar Guardian as my main kind of example as a creature, uh, mainly because its power is only one. So if we have Delaney out in the field, we could double this. Which, you could actually use to flicker multiple creatures, have them, you know, effectively flip, but not flip. This is actually much stronger for the beefy morph boys that don't have effects for flipping. Because technically they don't flip, they're leaving and they're coming back on their front side. A little bit of a difference. Unyielding Gatekeeper 
Semester's End, and Teleportation Circle are all examples of this effect. There are other ones, uh, but these are kind of like the, the main ones that I felt were like the choice of it all. Omarthus Ghostfire Initiate is a beefy, potentially beefy boy. And uh, whenever they die, we get to manifest a bunch of cards. So kind of strong, kind of lets us like really tear through the deck all at once, but also a little slow. Now, with us drawing a bunch of cards, there is a chance that even with all the mana generation we have going on, we're not going to have enough mana to play out our entire hand, right? We might end up having to discard. So Thought Vessel and Reliquary Tower obviously come to mind. You know, you want to be able to hold on to those cards for as long as possible. Last up, and I kind of already mentioned it when going over the combo in the deck, Rhythm of the Wild it's just a nice way to be like, yeah, no, my creatures have haste. That way, even if you do wipe all creatures, you know, you're still like, haha, get fucked. Uh, but guys, those are the honorable mentions. That's the deck. You know, were there cards that I took out that you think is ludicrous? Cards that I added that you think don't quite get the job done? If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps to grow the channel and like the video out there to more people. Um, but until next time, good luck with your builds.